Swedish Airlines Euroleague. I feel devotion. In this episode in the Game of the Week, Seska's Sasha Kaun talks about his outstanding season. We get to know a little better two stars in different positions, Unikaha's Luka Zoric and Maccabi's Devin Smith. We met up with Monty Paskey's Alexander Razic and Omar Cook of Caja Laboral. And lastly, the B-Win MVP and the fantastic top three. Seska Moscow's improvement in the last games have been very tangible, as the Russian squad has won four in a row coming into week 13 and is battling to get home court advantage in the playoffs. This is a team full of concrete players like Sasha Kaun, who is a part of an impressive front line that also includes another great center like Nenad Kurstic. An amazing one-two that is very hard to match in the world of basketball. I'm more, more of a defensive player than, than offensive player, you know, and, uh, you know, it's just kind of obviously facilitate the defense and kind of hold the team around and talk to everybody while I'm on the court and offensively, you know, I'm great at uh, setting screens and rolling to the basket and stuff. And, you know, with Nana, we try to post him up a lot, you know, he's a an excellent post-up player, so when I'm in the game, I can do certain things, and when I'm in the game, he can do, he can hurt the team from other angles, so it's definitely been working out very well for us. The Russian center is playing his fifth season with Seska, and if he looks back to how he was in the early years and how he is now, he's definitely satisfied with his work. I started my first year here with Coach Messina, and it was a very difficult year, you know, first year in professional basketball and European basketball is a very different transition, but, you know, we had a good year and stuff, and then after, after that, my development was very good, and then I'm glad that Coach Messina is back, and we find a common language, you know, and, you know, we, we understand each other, and he's definitely helping me to get better and, you know, get, get, get the team better, for sure. As a former American college basketball player, Cowan can share some experiences in common with Ettore Messina and another member of his coaching staff. In fact, the Italian coach brought in Quinn Snyder, who is assistant coach from the Los Angeles Lakers. It's a pretty interesting experiment for everybody. It's also a mark of the excellence and the competitiveness of a top EuroLeague team, even on the American market. He's done a very good job of even unifying some of the American players, you know, kind of making them feel a, li a little bit better because I feel like they feel like they can talk to him better than, you know, he can understand them better and, and stuff. And just a little bit of diversity to the team in terms of having a little bit different coaching perspective and maybe help coach Messina in a little bit of different situations to where, you know, give him a little bit different looks. The presence of Snyder should be a sign of change in Messina's way of working or proof of what he learned from thinking and playing basketball in a different way. In terms of his attitude and his mentality and his goals in, in basketball, I don't think there will change, you know, it's, it's, it's still the same, you know, it's, it's still very demanding, it's still, you know, very high intensity and stuff, so it's, it's I mean, I like it that way, it's been a lot of fun. Seska Moscow hosted Real Madrid in our game of the week in a much-anticipated game between two title contenders. Both teams had a 9-3 record and the first place of Group E was on the line. The Russian side put on an exciting show in the first half, dominating their guests from the tip-off. They reached an 18-point lead in the second quarter. Sasha Kaun contributed with six points and four rebounds in 20 minutes on the floor, while his Serbian teammate Milos Teodosic was stealing the show once again, together with the usual production by Sonny Weems, who scored 21 points. Real Madrid cut Seska's lead in the final minutes, led by Rudy Fernandez's 24 points, but the hosts finally won 81-72, taking the tiebreak advantage by one point.
Milos Teodosic scored 17 points and dished seven assists in 33 minutes. We play, you know, really good like a team and uh, really it's, it's very easy to make seven assists if you have teammates like, like, like I have. In this moment, this is not important. It's important that, that uh, we win uh, tonight with uh, nine points and that we are clo very close to, to take first, uh, first position in, in our group. He's becoming the true leader of Ettore Messina's squad. He was our player of the game. Unikaha Malaga was still fighting for a playoff spot in week 13, and Yasmin Repaz's team have made a spectacular comeback in recent weeks to become a contender. It was a team effort, of course, but also a great individual performance by Luka Zoric, who was handed B-Win MVP awards in week 8 and 11, and has been absolutely fantastic in the paint. His fellow countryman Repeza knows that he can rely on him. He, he was my like my first senior senior coach. He, he bring me in team when, when I was 17 years old in Sibona, and I remember him from that time. He gave me confidence and uh, I have a great teammate and I think that's the reason why I scored more points maybe than last season. In modern basketball, the key word is versatility. Doric has had to adapt to different teammates to maintain his efficiency when it comes to his frontline teammates in particular. In this team I can play with all big guys, with, uh, with Panko, with Perovic, with Lima and with Vasquez. And for sure, if I play with uh, Punk or I play with Perovic, it's, di it's, di it's different. With Perovic, I play more like four. With Punk, I play more like five. Because I think that I, I can play both positions. Then he has to deal with another strong point of his team, the pair of guards that includes Earl Calloway and Marcus Williams, who have two different styles, ways of running and making plays. When, when we play with, with Calloway, I try to run more and I try to play differently. Or on, and with uh, Marcus, we play mostly pick and roll, and there's differences. Unikaha Malaga travelled to Istanbul without two key players due to injuries, Earl Calloway and Kronoslav Simon. Luka Zoric and his teammates were far from worried as they faced Anadolu Efes with plenty of personality and playing a hard defence, while the Croatian big man was hurting the local defence in the paint. Zoric finished with 21 points and 8 rebounds in 27 minutes in a close contest that Unikaha led most of the time. He was still there in the clutch minutes when Zoric and Marcus Williams scored the decisive points in a 13-4 final rush. Williams scored 9 of his 22 points in the latter part of the game, so added 7 rebounds and 7 assists. Unikaha won 70-64, their future was still in jeopardy even after the final buzzer. Unfortunately for Unikaha, it was a worthless victory as Panathinaikos Athens won at Brose Basket Bamberg and clinched their playoff berth. Next week, all the four qualified teams square off to allocate their places in the bracket. Real Madrid host Anadolu Efes, while Panathinaikos meets Seska Moscow, the only team with 10 victories so far, and they will defend first place. The battle for the home court advantage is still going on in Group E. It has been a roller coaster season for the Italian champions Monte Paschi Siena. They started the regular season with three losses, followed by five wins in a row. Then again, several victories to open their top 16 run as they became a true force in the competition. 
They came into week 13 with a positive record, but with only a fifth place in Group F because of the tiebreakers. The Serbian guard Alexander Razic came to Siena to add some experience, and he has been very useful in the top 16, despite having no playing time in the previous stage. He's an example of how a player should work when he spends most of the time on the bench, waiting for the right opportunities to come along. Sitting on the bench, you see how the other players play and you try to do your best to sub them when, when it's necessary. You know, I'm trying to do that right now and uh, I, I, think, uh, I think I will, I will help the team. Razic has played in several countries, including Turkey, Russia, Germany and Lithuania. What he would like to do in Siena is to experience that winning feeling once again as he did in his hometown with Partizan. The best uh, player time I had it, what is, was in, back home in, in Partizan. You know, the, I won two titles with Partizan, two cups, two Adriatic leagues and we played Final Four, so the best basketball moments I spent over there. And we played tough, but we didn't have any any luck, you know, we lost two games in last seconds and, and, but the experience was great, you know, playing Final Four with uh, such a club was, was a great experience for me. FC Barcelona Regal went to Siena to face Monty Pasqui without three important players like Juan Carlos Navarro, Ante Tomic and Pete Michael, but unfortunately out for the rest of the season. The Blaugrana started badly, down 21-6 after only a few minutes. But they responded with a 17-2 run before Razic's basket gave Siena a two-point lead at the end of the first quarter. The Italian champions that missed Daniel Hackett and Matt Janning could not resist to the power of Nathan Jawai in the paint, and they also had to deal with Joe Ingles, who went two points shy of his Euroleague career high, scoring 20 in 35 minutes. Christian Kangur and Razic cut Barcelona's lead to three points in the last quarter. But the guests were just too much for them, and they got their 11 success in a row. Even without your starting centre, when you have a player like Nate Jawai, you have no problems in the paint. The native of Sydney, Australia played his best game of the season, reaching a performance index rating of 34 and was awarded the BWIN MVP of the week for the first time this year. Nate was absolutely unstoppable in the paint, where he scored 22 points with 9 out of 10 shots, adding 4 for 5 free throws. The 12 rebounds equally split between offense and defense brought him to a double-double. One assist, two blocks, one of them decisive almost at the end of the game, and five fouls drawn, completed his fantastic night of work, setting career highs in points and rebounds. Devin Smith from Newcastle, a very small town in Delaware, USA, was probably playing his best season even if he had often shown his unique qualities in the past. Smith turns 30 this April and he is now the perfect age for an athlete, mixing energy, experience, enthusiasm and wisdom. That's why on the floor Devin is so versatile and is the player his teammates look to. In the beginning, try to help the new guys, you know, adjust to being in Maccabi, you know, and understanding, you know, what it takes to, you know, play here. And, you know, eventually, game by game, you know, I feel like my role changes. You know, some games I'm scoring, defending, rebounding. You know, I just try to, you know, do whatever it takes, you know, to help the team win games. He is an all-round player then, but it's impossible to forget about his biggest quality, his ability to block shots, almost one per game, which is really special for a player of his height. 
I think it's timing. You know, uh, a lot of big guys are the shots I'm, I'm blocking. You know, uh, they're fighting with our big men, and you know, I just try to come from the weak side and and just block the shot. You know, uh, you know, I'm a do it all kind of guy, and. If I get dunked on or something like that, I don't care. You know, I'm just trying to make the right play to help my team, you know, get an extra possession. Game by game, he and his teammates have grown in confidence, and now they are looking like the team from the regular season when they won eight games out of ten, overcoming their bad start to the top 16. No matter the situation, you know, we still had the same approach to practice every day and to every game. You know, we work really hard, you know, to you know try to better ourselves. We're not down and out, you know, we're still fighting until the end. Now everything is still possible for Maccabi. And if the playoffs should arrive, Devin will be keen to not repeat the mistake from last season when Maccabi lost game five in one of the best series in the history of the Euro League. Coming from that situation, you know, we just had to learn how to, you know, execute a little bit better on the stretch. And I think that uh, it took some time this year, but I think eventually, you know, we learned how to do that. After two seasons in Tel Aviv and after much traveling around the world to Spain, Italy, Turkey and Greece, he has found a new home, hopefully for many years to come. I feel like, you know, I kind of embrace you know, playing here, you know, the, the style of play and, you know, the history of the club. And I feel like they embrace me too, you know. Um, they appreciate, you know, what I bring to the table and, you know, just giving that all out effort all the time. Devin had another magic night last Thursday as he scored 16 points. Top scorer with Ricky Hickman, with a perfect three for three beyond the arc, adding nine rebounds, two assists, and his usual block. It was good for his team too, who basically killed the game off against Besiktas JK Istanbul after only a few minutes of play, scoring 61 points in the first half, which was close to setting a new record. In the end, Maccabi thrashed their opponents 101-58 and the playoffs run continues. Two seasons in one for Omar Cook this year. Ten games with EA7 and Porio Armani Milan, averaging more than seven points and five assists in 28 minutes. Since December, 12 games with Caja Laboral Vitoria, playing less minutes, almost 20, averaging 2.8 points and 3.3 assists. These are the stats for Omar Cook, although they are not that important for a player of his kind. An old-style point guard, a man who prefers the pass to the shot, the team's results to personal success. Now he has returned to Spain after the season in Malaga and Valencia between 2008 and 2011. A country he loves and type of basketball he loves also. Basketball in, uh, in Spain is much faster, you know, uh, more fast break. Um, the game is, you know, more fast. Although he knew what to expect, a change in the middle of the season is not easy, especially for a player in his position. Um, it's very difficult because you, you have to get used to a new team, new system, new players. And for me, I, I went from being a starter to the backup, you know, so it's a different role. But um, with my teammates and uh, Kyle LeBron, it's been great and uh, it hasn't been as hard as I thought it would be. Umar and his teammates had a huge challenge on the way to the playoffs at Himki Moscow region last Friday. You know, our goal is to, you know, go as far as possible and, you know, not limit ourselves. Try to make the top eight and then from there to, you know, try to go to the final four. Cook was in the starting five for coach Zan Tabak and he gave his team the rhythm they needed. Pinky Moscow region also had their future at stake and they responded. 
Cook's understanding of the game was just superior as he was able to put his teammates in the right situations, also in open court. The hosts resisted until Kresimir Lonchar scored back-to-back -back layups to put them up by two, and Omar Cook himself responded with his only three-pointer to launch a beautiful second half by his team. The Spanish team built up a 16-point lead in the final quarter, while Cook was dishing easy shot opportunities both on the perimeter and in the paint. The Russian side fought back to one point with less than two minutes to play, but the key for Caja Laboral was to keep calm and give the ball to Omar Cook. He found Andres Nocioni for a decisive three-pointer, and his side finally won 86-82, while Cook finished the game with a season-high 11 assists. The final round now promises to provide real fireworks. All the playoff contenders meet each other. Caja Laboral take on Monte Pasqui Siena with both teams on a 7-6 record while Himki Moscow region travelled to Piraeus to face Olympiakos. The Greek team, like Maccabi, has eight victories, and the Israeli champions will play at Barcelona, who are the only team to have qualified already. Just get your popcorn ready and don't miss a great top 16 finale. Now let's take a look to the top three plays of the week. Number three, Istanbul, Turkey. Anadolu Efes in action. Jordan Farmar drives the lane and connects with Kerem Gorlum, who throws down a nasty one-handed alley-oop slam. Number two, Tel Aviv, Israel. Nick Kaner medley of Maccabi Electra deflects a pass, gets going in transition, and rocks Nokia Arena with a monster slam. The number one play of the week, Moscow, Russia. Here comes Real Madrid. Sergio Rodriguez sends it in the air, and Marcus Slaughter soars to finish a high flying alley oop jam. That's it for now, but before we leave you, here's the next game of the week. The champion puts its title on the line against the challenger seeking its first playoff berth when Olympiakos Piraeus hosts Himki Moscow region in the next Turkish Airlines EuroLeague Game of the Week. In a do-or-die finish to the longest top 16 ever, the Reds will rely on last season's final four heroes, Vasinis Spanoulis and Georgios Printezis, to keep alive their title defence. Himki will get behind its own master floor general Zoran Planinic and the Euroleague's top minute performer this season, Paul Davis. In their history, the two teams met for the first time in the 2009-10 top 16, when Olympiakos took a huge 87-69 home win, led by 15 points nailed by Jotam Halperin. Then in the last game of the phase, Himki beat the Reds, who already qualified to the playoffs, 96-83. That night, Keith Langford starred with 24 points and 7 assists. When the defending champions travelled to Himki in mid-February, they faced a team coming off a long home winning streak. Panenic made it a 13-point game from the foul line early in the third quarter, 50-37. But a 33-point last quarter by the visitors, with nine unanswered points starting it, gave them an 82-87 victory. It was a historical night. Panenic set a new top 16 record, dishing 13 assists, while Olympiakos, with just three turnovers, tied another EuroLeague record. Kyle Hines and Spanoulis paced the winners, scoring 19 points each. Kostas Slukas netted 10 in the final quarter, while Davis contributed with 20 points for Himki. 
The top 16's final week will feature six simultaneous games between teams battling to reach or get home court advantage in the playoffs. So don't miss a second of the drama as Olympiakos takes on Himki in the next game of the week. Turkish Airlines Euroleague. I feel.